I've not said how great I look in this uh, monkey suit. Oh, well, I did think that. I love men in tuxedos. I think it's the closest they'll ever come to looking like Cary Grant. Is, uh, Ouch, yeah. that. <laughs> well, anyway, are you going to the reception? Because, uh, well, I can, uh, I can give you a lift. Oh, well, thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to wait for Terry. Yeah. Well, last time I saw Tony, he was in scrubs still. Uh-uh. Hi. Hi. Oh, there he is. Mm. Mm. You made it. Yep. You tired of waiting on me? No, actually, Walt well, was taking very good care of me. You look very handsome. Are you all ready Thank to you. go? Whenever you are. Oh, great. Dr. Jones, yeah. Dr. Tony Jones, please report to emergency uh, You heard it. Of course I heard it. Do you have any idea? Never mind. I don't have any idea. Okay. I'll take her as soon as I can. Would you right. uh, take her for a ride over there? Uh, okay. I'd love to. <laughs> See ya. All right. Bye. Let me, like, I'll grab my coat. I'll be right okay, back. Okay, I'll be right here. Okay. I am so sorry that you can't make the reception. Us too. Yes. We'll see you soon. Okay, take right. care. Um, Bye-bye. Audrey, Steve, I didn't happen to see um, the quartermates, Monica and Alan. Oh. Did they have an emergency or something? Uh, well, they called in their regrets a little while ago. Something about Alan Jr. Did you get it straight, Audrey? Well, she didn't really explain to me, but it was some problem with the boy, I think. Mm. Oh, but right now, we have a problem of getting me to the reception scene. Oh, yes, excuse me. Okay, I, I will see you over there. Right. Bye-bye. Well, i got to hand it to you, my friend. That was one of the better con jobs I've seen in a long time. You know your grandparents are a lot softer on you than we are, and you took advantage of that. I really did feel too sick to go to school. Mm. What do you want me to do? Go to school and throw up? But you're fine now? Well, I feel better. Yeah. And you know that your mother and your father are both doctors, and you felt fine at breakfast this morning. It wasn't until after we left that you decided to be sick. You got exactly what you wanted out of the situation, didn't you? You wanted attention, and you got that. You wanted to screw up our day, and you managed to do that as well. Now we missed a wedding because of you. I didn't know anything about a wedding. We told oh. you about it this morning. How are we going to believe anything that you say after this? You know, you said to me, you said that you... Hello, Alan. It's an emergency. We need you and Monica over here right away. Okay, Tony, what's going on? Uh, they found Anna Devane. It is? Oh, thank heavens. They found Anna Devane. You're kidding. I, 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 what kind of condition is she in? How is she, Tony? She's suffering from severe exposure. Paramedics are concerned about cardiac complications, and I'm going to put her in CICU. Okay, we'll be right there. Thanks. We've got an emergency at the hospital, son. We are not mad at you. I just want you to think about what we were just talking about, that trust is a two-way street. Will you think about that, please? Sure. Okay. Please. They can't tell when she might have eaten last. See, I see you ready? Yes. Okay, guys. Tony, she's been unconscious since we put her in the chopper. God, how long was she out there? She managed to get away from Putnam's cabin. She's been out in the woods all night. 92 degrees and falling, Doctor. Oh, we may be too late. Tony, come get on, do something. Get her to CICU stat. Let's Sir. move it. Do something. Instead of the general hospital. Well, at least the people on duty still know where, where to find us. Hello, Ruby. Bobby. I missed you at the chapel. Something wrong? No, no, it's just that somebody had to work. We could not show up at the same time. And then Ruby couldn't get anybody to look after Kelly's until now. Well, I'm glad you made it. Can you save a dance for me? Uh, I don't know. Okay, well, I'll check back with you later. I know you don't show up everywhere just to annoy me, but you do annoy me all the same. Thank you. You have a nice day today, too. Oh, baby. And what did Mr. Adorable want? 
Uh, nothing, really. Well, then why do you look like you picked up a nail in your tire? What did he say? Honestly, he didn't. It was Tom and Simone. They looked so radiant and happy, and it reminded me of my wedding to Jake, and I guess I just wanted to warn them against being too happy. Oh, knock it off. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. I want to forget about anything that reminds me of Jake today. Hey, hey, you don't seem to change your mind. First you want Jake back, and then you couldn't care less. Ruby, he's the one who's changed. Can I speak to you, Frank? I don't think I could stop you with a bulldozer. Well, I'm hearing all of this painful loss of Jake dialogue. I hope you're not going to make it come true. I think it's already come true. Nobody has ever disappointed me more than Jake has. I expected so much more from Jake. Never Betty ever made you happier than he did, and he can again. Listen, so there was lost mail. There was a bad telephone connection. You don't blow it out of proportion. I think I'm being very restrained. My husband's walked away from me for a period of two years without giving me an explanation that I can understand. What am I supposed to do, Ruby? Go to a nunnery. Honey, the line between pride and stubbornness is very thin, and I think you and Jacob crossed over. I don't know. I know that I should probably write it. Something keeps stopping me. Well, if you want to be the injured party and have Jake take all the blame, then you just blast away and you'll lose your marriage. Maybe it's already lost. Oh, honey, this isn't a contest. You need to talk to Jake face to face. Steve Hardy said the same thing to me last night, and I do agree. Two great minds run on the same account. But I just I can't go through with it. Honey, it's a marriage. Your marriage. If you're so big on marriage, why do you keep turning Dan Rooney down? He really wants to marry you, you know. That is a totally different book. Who is it? Well, look at him, Ruby. He's standing right over there. Do you want to see him married to Lucy's housekeeper? I hear the shower you threw for Simone was a roaring success. Oh, thank you. Um, I think everybody had a good time. I know I did, but I don't know if the host is supposed to have such fun at her own party. <laughs> Where's Charlene? I thought sure she'd be at the wedding the way she loves to dance. Oh, she does love to dance, and she wanted to come, but someone had to stand to care of BJ, so we flipped a coin and Aunt Charlene lost. Oh, that's too bad. Well, look, I've been uh, meaning to ask her, but I'll ask you. Why did you keep that business about her being your aunt so quiet? I mean, all the maid business and everything. Well, uh... Excuse me again. Lucy, have you seen Felicia? Isn't she in the ballroom? Nah, I was looking everywhere, and she's pretty hard to miss. She was invited, wasn't she? Oh, of course. Oh, I'm sure she was invited. I do know that Felicia's been working around the clock with uh, Sean and Scorpio in oh, an effort right. to find Anna. Yeah. Maybe there's been a breakthrough. Well, if there is any news, I'm praying that it's very good news. I hope so. Why do you think it could happen with that? I'm with you, Lucy. Pray. Okay. It's your turn. Felicia, will you get your feelings hurt if I ask you something? I don't know. What is it? Well, I know you like this game and all, but could we stop playing now? Well, I just thought we would pass the time. Well, we can stop if you want to. But it's just that I can't thinking about anything else except my mother. And I feel like something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. Honey, I understand the feeling. We're all worried about your mom. Something really was wrong with her. Really wrong with her. You'd tell me, wouldn't you? Look, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, hello. I didn't expect you so soon. Did oh. you go to the reception? Ah, uh, well, I think singing at the wedding was enough for one day. I, I wanted to get well, here anyway. Why don't you anyway. sit down and tell us about it? Oh, I've been okay. Dying to hear about it. You wanted to hear about it too, didn't you, sweetheart? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm? Um, well, uh, gosh, where to start? Um, first off, Dr. Steve Hardy walked down the aisle and he stood through the whole ceremony. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it was, it was. And, and we started out with a song, There Is Love, oh. and I sang that. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of okay. I stayed on key, at least. <laughs> well, that's good. Yes, uh, then they started the music, the wedding procession and everything. The groom came in, and the best oh, man so came funny. in, and it was. Well, let me, I'll get that. Oh, go ahead. And, and then, and then, as Hello? the, the Felicia, music started swelling and we everything, the bridesmaids started oh, coming down God. the aisle, and then there How was did you find so her? Where was she? Well, actually, we got her up in the Adirondacks. Um... Duke did uh, point us in the direction of where 
Grant was keeping him. So he was right. He did have a way to find her. Where are you? How is she? She's a very sick lady. We're a general right now. Chopper just landed and she's been rushed into CICU. Why CICU? She's got frostbite. Yeah. Severe hypothermia and what could be a heart complication. Oh, Robert, is she going to be all right? Uh, I wish I knew. We're here at the moment, uh, but it looks pretty bad. I'll contact the chopper. We'll get Nana to a hospital. Alan. Come here and help me, will you? Never around me. Let's get out of here. Tell Robin as much as you think best. I'll be there soon to have a talk to her. But, uh, let me get the word from the doctors here so if I can give her a, a report. And tell my little girl that I love her. Don't worry, I will. And when Anna wakes up, well, you know. Right. She's gorgeous. I don't know. I think that nice. What? What is it? Dad found her. They flew her to the hospital. And now they're waiting to hear from the doctor. Is Robin with Felicia? Yes. How is she? She's fine. Certainly about her mother, but otherwise fine. What's happening? How is she? She's still unconscious, which is not a coma exactly. She's just too weak and exhausted to do anything else. Well, what's the problem? It's hypothermia. It's where the core of the body cools below the level that the body can function, which is what a lot of people mean when they say exposure. Right now, we're warming her with blankets and a warm intravenous fluid. Yeah, we have to uh, warm her up slowly. Otherwise, she has the possibility of going into cardiac arrest. That's why you don't put her in a, a big tub of hot water. What about the frostbite? Her hands and feet are quite frostbitten, but it uh, could be worse. You're not going to have to amputate her limbs? No, I don't think so. Tony? No, there may be some scarring, but they'll heal. Well, uh, what's the prognosis? Well, it's a little soon to, uh, to give any word about that. But why? I mean, you're heating her up. You're, you're feeding her. What could possibly go wrong? Well, a lot of cardiac problems could go wrong. What kind of problems? Well, if the temperature of the body core keeps falling, which it could, no matter what we do, then the heart could simply stop. That's called cardiac arrest. Well, I'm going to be with her. I'm going to spend the night with her. She's on a heart monitor, and I'm not going to leave her until we know that she's out of the woods. You're not trying to tell me that she could still die, are you? Uh, we better get back in there with her. Just a minute. Now what? I'm headed over to the Brownstone to inform my daughter as to her mother's condition. Yeah, I think she should know. I'll be about an hour. I uh, trust you'll still be here when I get back. I'm not leaving here if Lana wakes up and talks to me. Yeah, well, before you talk to her, you're going to have a talk to me. There's nothing more I want to say to you, quite honestly. <laughs> you know, I still want to know how you got to Anna before we did. Now, for God's sake, man, the whole thing is finished. Why don't you get down your hands and knees and thank me for leading you to her? Well, I think I can control my gratitude until after I get the information. Damn it, Scorpio, it is over, finished with Putnam's on his way back to the institution and Anna, God help her, whether she lives or dies, is here with us. Why don't you put your energies into her getting well forget the rest? You see, at the moment I happen to have an ex-wife and a daughter to look after. My wife, my wife, and I will do the looking after, thank you. And what a wonderful job you've done up until now. But then again, I didn't have the mob as my next-door neighbors. As I recall, you almost got him killed once before. That won't happen again. I've taken care of him. Maybe. But, uh, you know, if you really gave a damn about your family... How dare you question the way I feel? You've got a bit too far, sir. I can't go too far where my daughter and ex-wife are concerned. So when I get back, you and I are going to have a little chat. Mate. <laughs> 